For every community, it's not just an issue in Nashville. We tend to seem to think that it's that's an urban issue. And it's, you know, it's, you know, it's uh, homeless veterans and all these kinds of things. We, we go individuals. But we've seen an increase um, in individuals you know, staying in their own home. We've seen an improvement in their own physical and, and mental health. You can go to this place and there you have your meal on Monday here at this church and Tuesday on that church and all that stuff. And as you know, Chief County Schools, uh, basically, as, as you read the McKinney-Vento definition of homelessness, um, basically anybody can move in and out of homelessness at any point in time. Uh, it's, it's a transitional issue. Uh, and what we basically do is when someone presents themselves uh, as homeless uh, to our school system for the first time, then we bring them in under McKinney-Vento, uh, provide services for them. We, so we cannot deny admission to a child who does not live, who has not traditionally lived in Cheatham County, but presents themselves to us under the homeless definition of McKinney Vento. Uh, that can be folks that are, as you said, in transition and flight, uh, you know, abuse, uh, any number of things, any number of reasons. And given the, the economic situation in which we find ourselves now, uh, more and more folks are, are moving in and out of that definition of, of homeless. So what we try to do is to make sure that we provide services through partnerships with folks like Centerstone, uh, our STARS program that we have in the south end of the county right now. We're going to try to move that throughout the county. Uh, but looking for ways that we can meet all the needs of our children uh, before and after school programs, tutoring programs, those kinds of things, uh, making sure that adequate transportation is provided to, to children to and from school, and then uh, ultimately making sure that we uh, make sure that those children are fed uh, and, and well cared for, uh, free of lunch opportunities for all of our children. And, and, uh, and most of these children, if, they're, if they meet the definition of homeless, then obviously they're eligible for free of lunch uh, almost automatically, and so uh, or without hesitation. So. Our, our organization tries to find whatever the needs are of those children, uh, and, and, and whether they be transient homeless or whether they be long-term homeless, and look for opportunities to try to meet all the needs of those children. Um, and, and it's case by case, child by child, family by family. And so uh, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, disturbing situation, but uh, we look at it as an opportunity to try to make a difference in those children's lives and, and in those families, the lives of those families, to try to, try to provide the services they need. You know, it's tough for folks to, 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 to admit that situation. And, and that in itself becomes a barrier from time to time to be able to provide services. So what we have to do is look for those signs and symptoms and look for those referrals and those opportunities to, to, to go ask questions and, and, and intervene where we need to intervene. It's not, you know, it, it's tough. It's tough to actually step up and say that you're, you find yourself in that situation. Well, thank you, Judy, for allowing me to be here tonight. Being with you too, Dr. Webb. Um, the Metropolitan Homelessness Commission is, was created by city ordinance to implement the mayor's 10-year plan to end chronic homelessness and reduce overall homelessness in Nashville and Davidson County. Uh, it was created in 2005, and since that time, um, we do a lot in the area of planning and coordination. We work with the, some 105 different agencies throughout Nashville and Davidson County in addressing various uh, homeless issues. Um, we do planning and coordination around housing, around case management, around transportation, around mental health issues, uh, around um, uh, access now to health care, uh, as well as a host of other uh, issues that, that impact now homelessness. We also created a fundraising arm um, to uh, a, a separate 501c3 that goes out in the community and works with uh, the private sector to raise the resources that we need uh, to get people off the street and into housing. And since our inception, we've launched uh, two very successful uh, piloted programs that has gained some uh, national attention. One being our Housing First program, and that's where we take people off the street and we put them in housing and put uh, case management services around them. And I'm happy to report that you know, today, since we've done that, we've got over 87 uh, individuals in the housing, and we have a 94% housing retention rate. You know, those individuals that have gone into housing have maintained their housing after graduating the program and, and moving on to self-sufficiency. To explain a little bit more about Housing First and the formula we have in case management, okay. what that is. 
the housing first formula um, that we use, well, the formula is very, very simple. Now, this is a quiz for everybody. Um, it is housing plus case management plus income reduces homelessness. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about you know, how many people did you get housed. Um, it's been my experience you now that uh, when I ask a person who is experiencing homelessness, you know, how can I help you or what, can, what do you need, the first thing that comes out of their, their mouth every time, I need housing. So what we do is we take housing and we put people in housing, regardless of whether or not they have uh, addiction problems or mental health problems, we take people right off the street and we put them in housing. Then we put the wraparound case management around them and we charge the case managers to do their job. Your job as a case manager is to keep people housed. And what we have seen since we've done that is a reduction in time out on the street for individuals, a reduction in going to feeding programs, We've seen a reduction in jail time for individuals. We've seen a reduction in going to the uh, hospitals and emergency rooms for individuals. But we've seen an increase um, in individuals you know, staying in their own home. We've seen an improvement in their own physical and, and mental and uh, health conditions. And we've seen those individuals um, decide, you know, in order for me to keep this house, uh, I need a job or I need to do something about my substance abuse problem. And so the case manager puts a plan in place with that individual to help that individual move to the next step you know, in being able to maintain that housing and achieve you know, self-sufficiency. Self so Housing First is a very simple formula um, that allows individuals you know, to come right off the street, regardless of their issues, go into housing, and become good neighbors and good tenants. We also have a best practice uh, program around Social Security and Disability through our SOAR program. Well, we managed to get people uh, SSI and SSDI benefits you know, in 54 days or less. Uh, we have a 98% first time approval rate and since our inception we've served over 320 individuals which equates you know, to $6.3 million collectively that we've been able uh, to get uh, from the Social Security and Disability Administration to get people off the streets and into to housing. What we are seeing is an ever-increasing number and percentage of students who find themselves at the poverty level, their families find themselves at the poverty level, uh, as evidenced by their ability to, drug, to, to be eligible for free and reduced lunch, which tells me that as we see those numbers rise, we also see those folks with the propensity to be one check away from being homeless or being displaced and being in a situation where they can't take care of themselves or can't help themselves and need our, our assistance. So uh, we're seeing those numbers go up, particularly in the middle part of the county. Uh, that's where the, the, the poverty level seems to be rising the fastest. Uh, we do see a little bit in the, in the north and the south, but primarily it's concentrated in the middle part of the county. And so, uh, you know, we we're trying to reach out to and make sure that we, we make sure that we meet the needs of those children and try to keep a pulse on whether or not uh, the situation is, is degrading or whatever. Well, how many free lunches are given out at school? Um, of course, you know, that's set based on a, a level of poverty, but we have anywhere from, depending, in, in some schools it runs close to 70% of the students that are on free reduced lunch, and in some schools it runs 20%, uh, depending on the, the geography of the county. Uh, but we do have schools that, that rank somewhere between 60 and 70% free reduced lunch at this point in time. So, obviously, we have some folks that if they're not, in the homeless situation, they're on the cusp of being there because of poverty. Yes, sir. As a pastor of a church in Chico County, based on the the church, we want to know what are some of the things that we can do to be a part of fixing the solution. Well, I, I would say, you know, a simple thing, you know, would be, you know, to adopt a family. You know, start start there. Um, I'm a firm believer, Pastor, start where you are, use what you got, do the best you can. Um, and it may be as simple as helping the family and all with a job. Um, it may be helping the family and all with budget. Um, it, you know, it, the things, you know, it's, it's, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's easy to write a check. Okay? Uh, that's the easy way out. You know, um, but when you come alongside of people, 
and walk with people. You know, that makes all the world a difference and stuff. You know, that that's that's real brotherhood and stuff. You know? So I would say, I'll start there, and I'll with with, with adopting a family, you know, um, and trying to make a difference in that family's life, and then when that works, move on to another. We have a program that we just launched, you know, called Go Teach. Um, and it is a mental program where uh, we're asking congregations, you know, to uh, be mentors for uh, homeless individual families, you know, for a period of a year. Um, it takes six individuals, you know, to be a part of that mentoring program. And there is an extensive training process, and you know, also that the mentors are not enabling, but really, you know, helping the individual know what, what to do, what have you. Um, and adopt a unit. You know, how many have ever sent a child to college? Okay, um, you go out to Walmart and Target and you buy things and all, and you put it in the dorm room, right? Well, when homeless people come off the street, they have nothing. And so we ask people to adopt a unit you know, and put up, you know, curtains and cups and saucers and knives and spoons and all that stuff because they have have nothing. So to help furnish the the apartment, you know, so we call that adopt, adopting unit and stuff. So there, there are definitely things and all that people can do to get involved. This question is for Dr. Webb. Um, counselors in the schools, are they trying to assist the families or the children that are in homeless? Uh, they, they, they are trained, but not to the level that it should be. Um, they, they're, they're, um, they focus more on academics, more on those, the scheduling and those kinds of things. And they don't, they don't have the time uh, or haven't been able to, we haven't been able to free up the time for them. Uh, but they have gone through some level of training. It's probably not sufficient to, to do the kinds of things that, that Clifton and his folks do. Uh, but um, they, they, they are there for that resource as well. Well, I think, you know, uh, individuals in rural counties see a very different, a, a different type of, of homelessness. You know, I, I think it's more hidden. Um, but I certainly uh, would say, you know, that rural counties you know, definitely has uh, homeless problems. Um, some rural counties you now choose to ignore it, you know, and others you know, do not. Um, we have some neighborhoods in, in, in Davidson County that will swear you down that they don't have homeless people you know, in, in their council district. Well, not true. <laughs> they, they do. Uh, they're just uh, hidden you know, more. Um, as far as, you know, uh, what can you do you know, to create awareness, uh, I think forums like this uh, helps create awareness. I think getting into the congregations and openly talking about uh, homelessness uh, is a way you know, in, to create you know, more awareness. Um, also, um, my staff and I would be more than happy you know, to uh, work uh, with, with this kind of um, and looking at a Project Homeless Connect event, you know, because I think, you know, that when you address the issue of poverty, you begin to look at the issues of, of homelessness, you know, as, as well, because I think homelessness, you know, is, is, is nothing more than a symptom of, of poverty. Um, and so everybody fits in those, those categories. Um, and if you have veterans that are returning, you know, from the wars and what have you, then I would say, you know, that there's a good likelihood, you know, that uh, there's a way, you know, to do some awareness campaigns around that, you know, because, you know, many of our veterans uh, are homeless. And if we have kids, you know, that are in the foster care system, you know, 25% of the kids coming out of the foster care end up on the street, you know, homeless and stuff, you know, so, uh, yeah. We need to do more you know, about awareness you know, in, in our rural counties as well, because it's not just an urban model. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.